All right, so a couple months back, I went to one of my local auctions, and I uh, picked up this $6 million man command uh, console uh, for about 8 or 9 bucks. I got it pretty cheap, but it was uh, missing some parts, and it had some broken pieces as well. So uh, I, of course, decided that uh, I would use this and model some of the replacement parts that I needed so I could complete it. And of course, if you ever found these, they are often missing a lot of parts. So one of the parts uh, that I needed was the legs. Now this opens up um, when you're operating on the $6 million man and when you're showing that you have the power to rebuild him. Uh, this opens up and these legs go on to kind of have this whole thing set and uh, there. Um, to lay out and then you have all sorts of things to hook up to the six million dollar man to kind of repair him was part of the play action in this back in the 70s and this was a very popular toy back there of course you grew up in the 70s you grew up watching the six million dollar man wonder woman the bionic woman uh, all those shows at that time which were awesome awesome shows i even still sometimes rewatch them today but so anyway today i'm going to kind of start uh showing you uh the modeling let me move this over here just for a second. Uh, the modeling of this leg and how I went about it. So this was the original model that I created. And uh, I will get through this as quick as I can. And of course, if you are doing this using Inventor on your own and want to learn how, I encourage you to follow my steps. Just kind of uh, break it down, uh, stop the video and go back and forth. And you can learn how to use the different controls on this one as well. So as you're going. So, uh, to start out with, I'm going to, in Inventor, start with a new part. So we're loading this up here, and I'm going to start out just by doing a two-dimensional sketch. Now, first thing that I need to go to is select a plane. I got the XZ plane, the XY plane, the YZ plane to select. Um, this is a Cartesian coordinate system, of course, so I will uh, start on the XZ plane because I'm going to project this up, kind of manipulate this around now. Uh, looking at the part, basically I am deciding what are my basic shapes here so uh, that I can go. I kind of have like a, uh, well, uh, the first thing I'll start with here is this uh, circle feature on the bottom. Then I kind of have this taper. There's another uh, kind of that X or T up here. So I can go in, of course, it's cut out in there. So I look at all the shapes, and I'm going to start here with the circle uh, as part. And I'll just real quick take a measurement on there with my calipers. Uh, and that measures out at uh, one, basically, one inch exact. So I'll just make a one inch circle. So I go up here to my uh, model tool for the circle, center point, pick off of the uh, X0, Y0, just click and then type in 1. That's all I need for now. That's my sketch. So I'll click Finish Sketch. Now I want to extrude that, what they call an extrusion. So come back in here, and at this, now I'm measuring this thickness of that. So and uh, that comes off, and that measures at uh, 100 thousandths. So I'll type in 0.1. 100 thousandths, and I'll just go ahead and hit OK, cancel out of that. All right, now, now I've got this square, uh, and because this is a taper, and it's tapered equally on all four sides, I'm going to use what they call a loft on here. I'm going to do a square sketch down here where it connects to that circle, and I'll do another sketch up here, whatever that is there. So. Uh, I'll start another sketch. This is the surface. So brings this back up again. So come back in here. Uh, in this case, I want to create a polygon, a rectangle, two point from the center. So I'll click on that center again and open this up. Now, here's where my measurement comes in. Oh, just drop the part. Klutzy uh, fingers. So there we go. All right, that measures uh, half an inch. So now I want this in both sides. So I'll go 0 0.5, tab over to 0 0.5. So it's equal. It's not a rectangle. It is a square. 
uh, enter, and that is the square. That's all I need for this because this is going to be a loft, so I'll finish that off. Come back in here. Now, I need to create a an offset to another plane where I'm going to create this, so I need to know the distance from here up to here. So I'll, again, use my uh, measuring tools, and that measures to be... Uh, two and three eighths of an inch roughly so so I'm gonna create a offset plane what's called a plane and I will click on here just hold it down and grab it notice how it pulls that plane so 2.375 and move that now I need to zoom out so you can see so now I got this plane up above I got a square down here and I got a plane up here that's where I'm going to create my next sketch so I'll start from there so we want to sketch on this particular plane so and in this case I'll draw another rectangle zoom in a little bit again from center out now I'm going to measure up here at the top so this is uh, let's see that measures hey surprisingly enough that's three-eighths of an inch as well so I'll just type in 0.375 that's the decimal equivalent of three-eighths 0.375 up there click and finish sketch so now now I've got that down here and I got my sketch up here so this is going to be a loft so I'll create the loft when I 3d model that so first it wants to select this and I will select this now sometimes you'll see that kind of goofs up with there it projected some of my lines on so I need to kind of come back here I'm gonna edit this sketch for a second I find this generally works a little bit easier for me to just kind of come in and delete uh, some of these lines like that out so that it's not hanging up and inventor knows for sure exactly what I want to pick up on when I go to model this so all right now let's go back to my loft so I'll select this square and I select that square there you go hit OK that's that particular feature on there now uh, we still have to model this part up here so now I could model this in several different ways I could go ahead and I could just draw that out as the T or the X or I could kind of draw it as a square and then cut material out of it so in this case I think I will go ahead and uh, just draw it as two rectangles so let me start my sketch again I'm back on uh, this surface or that work plane so and I can still go off of the rectangular feature so a two point here now in this case this will be a rectangle so I got to measure here both the thickness of this uh, which is uh, a sixteenth of an inch and the width of this which is a quarter of an inch so so point zero six two five is one sixteenth of an inch and this is a point two fifty or a quarter inch hole now I'm gonna think here in terms of this fitting in I imagine that the hole in the mating part is a quarter inch diameter hole so I'm gonna make this about five thousandths undersized so that when it prints it will won't be too tight and it'll go in there so I'll make that 0.245 or about five thousandths below a quarter of an inch hit enter and I'm going to do the same thing now only going the opposite direction so uh, 0.245 tab 0 0.0625 as well so that gives me uh, that interior cross there but I gotta go in and clear some of these things out so uh, let me go up here to my modify tool I'll modify I'm gonna trim out this so actually let me escape out of here I'm gonna get rid of some of these construction lines so they don't uh, mess things up too much and I'm you'll see this a little bit more clearly ordinarily I'd probably leave those construction lines in because they do define the rectangle um, but this is gonna make the trimming easier so as I clear these out now you're gonna ask why am I clearing out those things 
Inventor, when it creates the extrusion, it needs a closed off feature. So, um, and the only way you can do that with those lines left there, I had one, two, three, four, five basically closed off features, and it wouldn't know exactly which one uh, to extrude. So it would give me some funny things. So it's easier just to go in and trim that out and just have the extrusion there of what you want. So we'll go ahead and I'll click finish the sketch on that. So I'm going to zoom back in here and we will extrude this now. So this is the part that I want extruded. Got to come back in here and measure whatever that distance is. In this case, the distance is, uh, well, surprisingly enough, that's 400 thousandths of an inch. So make this 0.4. Extrude that. And uh, let me go ahead and take this, make this work plane invisible now so I don't see it. There's the basic shape of the part. So a uh, couple of things remaining. Uh, I'll come back in another video. Um, so notice uh, that looks pretty blocky. There's some things on here that we want to kind of create. So we'll put this fillet here and I'm just going to make this 0 0.0625. That's going to go around this bottom surface, so I'll apply that, so that gives me that fillet. And I kind of have the same thing up here as well, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll create that fillet up here. Now, in this case, it's not going to be that big, so i got to make it smaller because I'm kind of smaller in here, so I'll just kind of put this around just to kind of soften these edges a little radius it could be a chamfer chamfers and radiuses help with lead ends on parts that way it makes it easier for you to put and insert that in apply that there you go now i'm gonna come up here we're gonna make this uh, abs plastic and i'll just apply a blue so this is just a color it so um Sky blue, medium, there you go. Kind of matches the color on that. So now, only thing left to do here is to kind of create this on that part. So come back, start my 2D sketch here on this plane. There we go. I can uh, project that geometry, which will basically be this. And then I can offset that. We'll just offset that the 16th as well. There we go. Finish that sketch. We will extrude this part. And I want to extrude it back into the part. This goes about uh, 0.2. So roughly. No, not even. Uh, about 0.15 going that way. Hit OK, rotate it around, because now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we'll start another two-dimensional sketch on here. Again, I'll project that geometry on this. Actually, in this case, I can pick all of this up from previously. There you go. Finish that sketch. Extrude. So... This is the part. Notice how it's picking that up. So that's the sketch. So cancel that out. So have to go back into that sketch just to make sure we'll edit this back out again. Want to get rid of this so that it doesn't pick up on that. So that's kind of messing me up. So, so finish that sketch. It's still kind of showing. Sometimes Inventor acts goofy this way. Uh, but we'll extrude this, and here, notice it's only wanting to kind of pick up on this, so, so again, just hit cancel. Uh, I'll have to go back in, and we'll correct that, but that gives you the rough idea of how we go, um, then I would just basically save this file however I need it to, but that's roughly how you model this, uh, six million dollar man leg for the mobile support um, command station there. So uh, if you have any questions, send me an email.